Find the best people you want to get close to. Find them. Get close to them. Do whatever it takes to learn everything you can from them. Because when you do, you're going to be a lot better off. I want to see other people win. We're so focused on ourselves in the beginning that we forget about other people. But to build an empire, you can't do it with one person. What's up, guys? Uh, BC here. We're fucking always laughing and joking, even when we're not recording and when we are, right? Uh, I wanted to do a quick video for you. I did a video a while back that's still getting a lot of views on nailing the first 30 seconds of a cold call. I wanted to add to that and do some other things that you can do in the beginning of a cold call and just in general to connect more with people and have more success over the phone. And this is obviously applicable as well in person, at meetings, going door to door, and regular social interactions. So make sure you think in a broad universal spectrum instead of just thinking in sales. Okay, let's jump right in. Number one is this, mirroring people. Now what I say, Mirror, many of you have heard of mirroring and matching. Now, it can mean a lot of things. So to keep it simple, let me give you a few quick examples and then I'll explain them a little bit more in detail. When you call somebody, okay, whatever they say first and how they say it, you need to do the same. So if I, I get somebody that says hi and they say it super quick, I know I have a faster talker and I'm going to say hi in return. Even something as simple as that can help you right away. If they say hi, do not say hello. If they say hi, you say hi. If they say hey, you say hey. If they say hello, then you're gonna say hello, right? As silly as that sounds. You wanna mirror even that. So if they say, hello, who is this? You know, it's a fast talker. Say hello, this is so-and-so, right? If they say hey slower, right? You get, you get my drift here. All those little micro details, you wanna catch onto them right away and be absolutely certain that you're picking up on all those little details. Now, obviously with that comes knowing your script and being in a comfortable enough position to where you know, you're not so nervous that you, know, you don't even notice it and you just say your script. But this is where you can take it up a notch to get people's attention a little bit better versus just sounding like a generic salesman that they're immediately gonna hang up on, okay? So again, the words, the tonality, the, the tempo, right? How quickly they speak. You wanna be paying close attention to that and mirror that as much as possible. Why? People like other people that are like them. We tend to hang around people that are like us. Okay, and the more you can demonstrate that, the more chance you're gonna have on the phone or in these interactions, okay? Number two is being familiar. Okay, what I mean by being familiar, if I'm gonna give it another simpler term, is humanize your conversations. So typically, let's say I'm calling um, for real estate, right? Because I'm in real estate, and let's say I'm calling a property owner, and the property owner's name is uh, John Jackson, right? As a generic name, okay? How would a typical script tell you to say it. It would say, hello, is this Mr. Jackson, right? Which right away, if you use the last name, they know you're a salesman. Is this Mr. Jackson, right? Because that's not familiar, that's not human. That's somebody who doesn't know them initiating a communication with them, right? Then the script will tell you after they say yes to say, well, hello, Mr. Jackson, my name is blah, blah, blah. Now already they know you're a salesman, okay? So how would I humanize or make that familiar? Well, if I know the owner's name is John Jackson, we can assume that's a man, okay? Now when I call, when I call, if a male voice answers, I'm gonna say, John? John, is that you? Now, some of you may say, well, that's very simple or silly, but that right away will take that person's brain away from, is this a salesperson, to, oh, who is this that I might know? Okay, and that gives you that window to then introduce yourself and it gives you a small window that wins you the next five seconds. And if you win the next five seconds, that'll earn you the next 10 seconds after that. That's how this cold call or prospecting game or interaction game is one. You, your, your introduction wins you one more question, then your next question wins you the next one. And that's how it is, and we have to play the game correctly. But that's how you do it. So start looking at your script and say, okay, all this, hello, is this Mr. Jackson? Let's take some of that rigidness out after you memorize it, because obviously the first step is memorizing it. But once you do, let's take some of that rigidness out and say, hey, if I was talking to my friend or my mom, how would I use this same script with somebody that I know? Now, it's counterintuitive because you would say, well, I have to have that level of, um, you know, uh, what, what would it be called? Um, political correctness, I guess what you would say for, to a stranger, or people would say like level of respect, right? People are turned off by it, right? Where that came from, I don't know, but that's kind of the, the synopsis I've made based on asking people, why would you still do that if you know that like it's rigid? Well, uh, that's, how, that's what we're supposed to do to be socially acceptable, right? Throw that stuff out the window for a second and say, how can I humanize this, okay? The more you do that, 
the simpler things will become and the more you're gonna connect with people because they don't feel like they're talking to a salesperson, they feel like they're talking to a human being, okay? Number three is this time constraint. Man, this is the biggest thing. I have mastered this, especially going door to door or interacting with people in, uh, in person, right? But especially on the phone. After you introduce yourself, say, hey, I just have one or two quick questions for you and then I'll let you go, right? Use some sort of pattern or language to let people know, hey, I'm only gonna be here a second. I would do that at the door all the time. Hey, I'm only gonna be here a second. I was just stopping by because blah, blah, blah. Just saying that maybe seems counterintuitive to you. Again, none of this stuff is really logical. It just works, okay? Now the key here is, you know they're gonna say it, and even more importantly, they're thinking, how long is this person gonna to try to keep me on the phone or at the door? By you saying it, you address it, right? And you get that thought out of their mind. And the cool thing is you can keep using this. I'll say two or three more questions and say, okay, just a couple more and then I'm leaving, or I got one more and then I'm, I'm gone. I'm out of your hair, right? I use this constantly, especially if I feel like the person is pulling away because I want to be the first one willing to walk away. And by you saying it, right, it lowers tension. So in reality, it's called a false time constraint, but I just wrote time constraint because you're giving it first. So practice this. Hey, I just got one or two questions for you, then I'll let you go. Hey, I, I just stopped by for a second, then I'm out of here, right? Work on variations. There's no perfect way to say it, but basically just say, hey, I gotta get going in a sec. Or, hey, I just have one question for you, then I'll let you go. Work on creating your own version of that, and you'll see how effective it is. It really is, okay? Number four is meet them where they're at. Typically, when you're cold calling or uh, prospecting, right, lead generating, you're gonna be catching people in different emotional states and different thought patterns. So let's say I have a script, which is introduction in the first part, the second part is qualifying them, right? And the third part is setting the appointment. Well, you're gonna have talking points in your script and it's gonna be a little bit different depending on the um, industry that you're in. But where are they at? So in my industry of real estate, I'm catching people either like in a highly emotional state where they're complaining about something or someone, which typically in those scripts is like in the middle, or I'm coming across somebody who has no idea who I am and they have zero interest and I have to open up the conversation. So take a look at the scripts and dialogues that you've come up with and that you're using and say, hey, in the case like I said where somebody's emotional, where in the script does that line of questioning pop up? And if I open the conversation and they're already on that thought pattern and at that place, then I need to immediately jump to that center part or portion of my script and ask the questions that are there. I can always go back to the top you see, that's a mistake I see a lot of salespeople make is they think they're supposed to go from top to bottom every time. But if somebody is already on the topic of question five out of your 10 question script, why would you start at the top? You're gonna to break rapport, right? They're gonna think you're not listening and it kills the flow of the conversation. This is what creates that flow. If you didn't know, how do I create flow in a conversation? This is it. Meet them where they're at. Now from there, you can take control, no problem. But initially, you need to meet them where they're at. Even if you need to recover, you need to, again, meet them where they're at and then pull them back to where you were originally. Now this is an art form, it takes a lot more time, but this is why you have to have your scripts memorized and you have to know, hey, where are they at? And you have to really listen. And when you catch this, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to open conversations and keep them flowing and going, all right? And the last one is staying in control. We know in conversations, particularly in sales, the one who's asking the questions and setting the frames is the one who's winning and who's the one in control. Too many people lose control. Here's two quick tips for you. If somebody asks you a question, two things that you can do. Either answer the question and then follow it up with another question or at least answer the question then ask them a question with a tie down, right? Or confirm it with a tie down, okay? And what a tie down is, is a question that you ask them at the end, like does that make sense? Are you with me? Can you see what I mean? Where they have to confirm and say yes because you just ask the question. So it's you answer and then a tie down, or they ask you a question, you answer it, and then you immediately follow it up with a question. That way you're in control again, right? Those are two quick little tips I can give you to keep it going, but that's what you gotta do. Because how many times have you guys been on the phone or in person or at a meeting, you let them ask a question, you answer it, then they ask another one and another one and another one, and then a minute later, you're like, what the hell's going on? I lost it. That's where you lost it, because they took control, and because they're not the ones leading the conversation, like you are, and you're supposed to, especially if you're in sales, they don't know where to take it. And if they don't know where to take it, they're just gonna start letting their emotions pick random logical questions to ask you. And in most cases, it's to get out of the conversation, believe it or not, right? So these are just some simple tips, guys, that I can give you. 
uh, that will help you with really nailing that opening portion, but even past the opening portion of a cold call or some sort of cold interaction that I think is really gonna help you, all right? So mirror, right? People like people that are like them. Number two, take that rigidness out of your script and make it more familiar by removing like the hello, is this Mr. John Jackson? And just say, John, John, is that you, right? Number three, time constraint. Be the first one to say, I gotta go, or I only have a minute, right? Then you play that power card before they do. Number four, meet them where they're at. Where are they at emotionally and on topic? Meet them there in your script, in your dialogue. Then take them through the other questions, but meet them where they're at, right? And number five, stay in control. The one who's asking questions is the one who is in control, okay? That's it for this one, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. For those of you looking to get closer to me, join my tribe, right? Get a part of my coaching and mentorship. You can join Modern Success. The link is in the description, or you can go to briancasella.com or the link in my bio on Instagram. For those of you who are in real estate and you want to work with me and my team, go to partnerwithteambc.com. Watch that video. If you like what you see, schedule a call with us. And lastly, check, check out my two new channels, Brian Casella Show and my podcast channel. Appreciate all the support. If you guys really like it and you really want to support, then subscribe to this channel too. Hit the notification bell icon and also hit that thumbs up. Leave me a comment below if you really enjoyed this or if there's something else in here that you want me to go over in more detail. All right, that's it for this one. Peace.